all aboard, see ya. G'day, I'm Bob Sampson, the Executive Officer for the National Railway Museum at Port Adelaide. My interest in um, trains in general started probably about the age of 13 when uh, there was a few country train trips to see relatives at, like Kapunda and Port Pirie, but more so when I started at uh, Adelaide High School and that trip in the morning and after school took me through the Mile End Rail Yards and the interest started to, to grow mainly because of the different sorts of trains I saw, including a few steam trains just at the end of their lives going past. And from that, uh, I really started to take note of the different sorts of trains and engines. And, and within about 12 months of, uh, of that enthusiasm, I met a couple of uh, similar age kids at the Mile End Station who were there with their cameras and got talking to them. And then I found out about a railway museum actually not far from home, which I didn't know about. Uh, and from 1968, uh, I've gone every weekend to the railway museums. I'm talking about a 50 year plus journey involvement with the railway museum from being a young 13 year old. I'm 65 now and I've had some involvement of some degree uh, all my life. So it's been a fantastic uh, journey and I've been on a committee or a board or in some uh, facet with the museum now for um, close to 40 years I've been involved uh, in some way uh, as I said in decision making and budgets and projects and yeah very interesting indeed. When I started in the railways as a young 16 year old youth porter at Adelaide Railway Station uh, sweeping platforms and collecting tickets it was important still is I think uh, I very quickly become qualified to go out shunting uh, in the railway yards at Mile End. There you go. Uh, I was back to Mile End again. And then I become what's called a signalman in the old days of mechanical signal levers and things, not keyboards like they do today. Uh, I then had an opportunity to transfer into the operational administrative um, uh, area, which I did uh, with a transfer back to Adelaide Railway Station in the late 1970s. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's a good comment to make, but I've never had any uh, tertiary education. I don't have any degrees. I, I, I love academia and what some people have been able to achieve, particularly young people. I never went near it. Never been to a computer course, haven't done anything. I, I call myself the kerosene kid because there's not many of us left that Really, we started work in the days of ice blocks for you know ice chests, kerosene for signal lights and lanterns, and and uh, no computers and no mobile phones. And and look, we we uh, still survived, I think, very very well and safely. Uh, and these days, you either have to go with the flow and adapt it. But I must admit, I'm self-taught in in a lot of that stuff. I don't know it inside out, but I know plenty to get on with, so yeah. Um, when the museum officially opened here in Port Adelaide, which was December 1988, it was a $2 million bicentennial uh, grant from the federal government. From the outset, it's always been a challenge because the museum can only survive if it's got sufficient volunteers, but also that a cross-section of those volunteers have got the necessary skills. And the skills that are necessary here vary from painters, plumbers, welders, um, electricians, but also a bit of marketing and advertising experience, um, financial experience. So it's a real blancmange of all these different backgrounds and skills that are necessary to keep this half million dollar a year business running. It's, it's, it really is so reliant on a good cross-section of volunteers almost on a daily basis. On weekdays on average we've got about 20 or 30 volunteers on site, weekends is a bit less because a lot of those volunteers actually come here as a, almost a men's shed equivalent uh, or they're on Centrelink so there's a whole lot of reasons that we've got a wonderful collection of 50 plus mainly in years of age volunteers but from a whole lot of backgrounds and skills. The museum's been going now for just over 30 years in Port Adelaide. Um, 
even though it seems to have had a lot of stop starts in its uh, its development, uh, we're here for obviously the long haul and, and, and it's only in the last couple of years, and I have to say it personally, it's only in the last couple of years that we've seen some real genuine changes in growth. And they include things like the Dock One housing development, our wonderful neighbours uh, Pirate Life with the brewery, the, the Starfish Enterprises with the hotel development, the Colac Hotel being developed, uh, changes around the marine environment. Um, I, I think, including the Port Council, I, I think collectively it's never been better than right now. Nowhere else in Australia do you have such a wide variety of different trains on different railway gauges in the one location. We've got stuff from France, America, Germany, um, let alone of course the states of uh, uh, Australia, but there's, there's stuff from Scotland, there's England. So all that stuff put together with good examples of the types of trains operated all around Australia. And here it is in Port Adelaide. It's such a, such a collection of valuable assets in the one location. Um, one of the happiest moments of my life was after two years of hard planning and coordination was shaking hands with Dick Smith in the middle of the Nullarbor to celebrate the centenary of the joining of the railways from east to west. It was a fantastic project, no government funding at all. It was Dick Smith's sponsorship money and a lot of work by about 200 volunteers from Regional Development Australia, uh, local communities and the National Railway Museum of course helped make sure it happened. But to unveil those monuments in the middle of nowhere to celebrate centenary of the Trans-Australian Railway, it has to be up, way up the top. Look, I've had a wonderful, uh, a wonderful life. Um, hopefully I'll be around for a few years yet. Um, I used to, I used to, I won't say Perth, but I did, uh, on this girl at Adelaide Railway Station um, way back, and three years later I married her. And there was a bit of, uh, a bit of a gap in between, but, uh, lo and behold, uh, that's about 41 years ago now, and uh, we've had a wonderful uh, uh, journey, been overseas a few times, got a great daughter and son. I think that's very important, the home life and um, enjoying that time together. So if you've never been to the National Royal Museum at Port Adelaide, please make an effort, come and see the museum, and you'll go away absolutely happy that you went, and you'll tell all your friends to come. Because even though we get 50,000 visitors a year at Port Adelaide, which we think is pretty good, and we're rated by uh, TripAdvisor, for example, way, way up the top, we need more and more people to come to keep this non-government funded museum alive. I, when I retired um, eight years ago, I thought I'd do this for about five or 10 years. Obviously I've gone past the five years, and I think while there's still, in my own mind, while there's still a genuine passion and need, and whilst I'm healthy, um, I think I'll continue to do it. I don't see any reasons why, why I would stop for any specific purpose. Uh, the great founder of the museum and a great close personal friend of mine, uh, he passed away only a few months ago, Ron Fluck. One of the pavilions is named after him. He made it to 93 and he was a regular volunteer at the museum from 1964 onwards. And I think to myself, well, if he can do it, why couldn't I? I'm not suggesting I'll go to 93, but I think there'll be a few years of me left.